So head on. Head on in here, shall we? Get Stream Decker updated real quick for y'all. Hey, y'all, watch this. It's called Rat Lock because you theoretically chittering rats them during their draw step. Or are you, or are you ravenous rats displacer them inside of their draw step? You know. Nothing, nothing but modern staples here, chat. And of course, like every good magic deck, we have four Restoration Angels. Trigger. It's the rat's mirror. Gin, whiskey, or rum. Flavored girly drinks. If the alcohol you're giving me couldn't pass for candy, I probably don't want to drink it. Was a do do fireball and rum chata count as any of the things you just listed, Brecken? That's the that's like the only I think those count as hard alcohol, right? Those are like the only hard alcohol I've ever had that felt reasonable. That's whiskey. Okay, it tastes like cinnamon toast crunch. It's great. Fireball and rum chata was the first time I've ever taken a shot and gone, that was decent. I could drink that again. Normally, normally when people suggest you do shots, it tastes vile. And I'm, I'm just the type of person that likes to eat things that taste good. A simple, simple man. My opponent commented that they were so in awe of our ravenous rats that they clicked through their turn by mistake. This one one for one opponent discards a card time walk. God bless. Oh no, chat. What if they displace our creatures? How will we ever win the game? How how will we ever beat Eldrazi Displacer? Uh, the Rock did not fight, but we died to Blue Trot in the last round. Take my thoughts, baby. Take my thoughts. All my thoughts are belong to you. Thankfully, I have two Path to Exiles here. I, I agree, Austin. I actually think the Green Tron matchup is pretty reasonable for Black Green. Blue Blue Tron basically preys on fair mid range decks, even harder than Green Tron does. Has an even worse aggressive matchup and even better mid range mid range matchup. Let's send that out of here and see what we draw. Trigger, trigger.
Uh, Black Green Rock is under the Proven section of my decklist page. It's a great resource if you're looking for sweet modern decks or good modern decks or a healthy mix of the two. Or can you get your bad modern deck fix? Check the meme section. There's a there's a meme section on my deck list page. It it lives up to its name. Uh, Bluetron does get to play spatial contortion now, but two mana lightning lightning strike is just like not a great modern card. It's like less bad than other things, but it's definitely it's definitely not amazing. Oh no, chat, what if they displace one of my rats? Oh no! Don't take away my Aldrazi displacer, I love her. Oh, are we getting processed? Gross. That's a tilt. That's eh, unfortunate. I think, I think if we don't rip removal here, we're mostly dead, right? Because they have six mana. They can just like blink, blink. Unfortunate. We're getting, we're getting out Displacer, chat. I actually don't have... Equin, thank you for the 11 month resubscription. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I actually don't have more removal in our sideboard either. I don't have Fatal Push or anything like that. I think I'm just supposed to click Submit. Pack rate's pretty bad against Displacer. I'm gonna bring in Fulminator Mage to keep them off of Displacer activations, I guess. It's like less bad than Pack Rat. Uh, we are first first batch of this league. We are 0 in, 0 down a game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we have four paths. And, like, I needed to fit Collective Brutality in here. Like, path's definitely a better piece of removal than Fatal Push. I think you play the four paths before you touch the first push. Uh, I think Slaughter the Strong is not quite good enough. They, they, they usually don't play... The Black White Eldrazi deck doesn't generally play Reality Smasher. It's just Thought Not Seer. So I think bringing in Slaughter the Strong for just Thought Not Seer is narrow. Remember that time they clicked through their second turn and we still died? I have a suspicion that this deck is not Tier 1. You would probably be correct, Stuffy the Seal. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I need to pester my wife about that. I need to need to get that going. Uh, this is going to be the last leak for today, Avery. Remember, uh, we went four and one with the Rock Deck Tarantula. Remember that Friday is one of my longer stream days, so I'll be live at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Huh. All right, we just can't keep a six lander. This is not great, but it's definitely keepable. I'm also planning to stream on Sunday this weekend. So I'll be live Sunday morning into the afternoon, I think, as well. It's nice to be home all weekend for a change. 9 a.m. Central. I'm cornfield time, so 7 a.m. PST. 
I'm live in in West Coast time. I'm live from seven to three. Tuesday through Thursday, I start at 9 PST. Tuesday through Thursday, I'm on for six hours. Monday and Friday, I'm on for eight. I'm a better look at we do this file is so ugly. Firm firm agree that this is the better looking Aether vial. Maronar not looking so hot here. I mean, that temp hammer for a talk some sass. <laughs> Welcome, cripple. All right. Oh, we get to cast a Rusto next turn. Thankfully, our Swarm Yards aren't legendary, so we can have both of them in play at the same time, which is nice. Bottom, bottom, bottom. All right. Uh, I think I'm actually going to leave... Aether Vial on... Nah, I'm gonna put Aether Vial to three. Punished. I got you, Tarantula. So if I would have left this on two, I could have made them discard two cards this turn. So you have a, you have a sinking suspicion chat that our average card quality in this deck might not quite be high enough. And the and that's saying something considering we're currently getting art out card quality by modern death and taxes. Modern modern death and taxes isn't exactly a high card quality deck. Well, I mean, like, Resto is, like, better than their entire board here. So, like, if they don't have a Path to Exile or, like, a Fatal Push, we could be okay here. Can't even regenerate from Wasteland Strangler. It's so rude. Lost our backup Resto, too. If they kill, if they deal with this Rusto, I'll pack it in. But I think while we have this 3-4 on their board, we're, we were actually in a position to, like, potentially be okay here. Ooh. Ooh, that's sweet. Give him the chit-chat, chat.
Wow, they have a path and they played it. That seems really good for us. I guess we're taking eight. I don't know, that just seems really good for us. Because, like, this resto just, like, dominates this board. No, that was the last card they had in their hand, Ryland. It's a great draw, too. Because it means when they attack into this Rusto Angel now, I'm going to get to block one, path the other, and only take two down to five. I, I agree, Gert. I also think that, like, Field of Rune, if you look over the years, they've, like, been trying to create this colorless land destruction spell that's good for a very long time. And they, they basically finally got it right, right? Like, it took them lots of iterations, but they finally got there. Uh, honestly, I think wait, Wasteland and Port would probably be my picks for the things I like least about Legacy after Brainstorm and Force of Will. Those are, those are the things I enjoy the least about the format, by and large. I think, I think Wasteland and Port add a lot of variance to legacy that's unnecessary there's a lot a lot of non-games in legacy occur because wasteland exists and makes them not play magic i think it's better to just not have silly i think it's better to just not have silly lands in the format like like when pe I've, I've heard people say i've heard people say like we need wasteland and modern to beat up tron and i'm like you don't understand what Wasteland does. Wasteland wouldn't punish Tron out of Modern. Wasteland would like punish decks like Jund and Black Green midrange. Force of Will adds a lot of variance to Legacy in that because Force of Will exists, we get to use it as a crutch to justify, well, that deck loses to Force of Will, so it's automatically okay. When... In reality, like, that deck's probably just too obnoxious. So, like, it creates these high-variance game where, like, the only thing you... The only question you ask is, can you beat my turn one thing? And if the answer is no, then you lose. And if it doesn't, then you win. And it just doesn't create very interesting gameplay patterns. And I get that that's a big part of Legacy, which is why I just don't play it. But I think, like... The idea that, like, a card like that and those games, those decks that it stops, create, like, interesting games or skill-intensive games, I think that's just silly. In my opinion, it doesn't do that. I don't, I don't think signing up to play a game where the only thing we, where the only thing that matters is, like, did I have my Force of Will just, like, isn't very interesting. I have a Collective Brutality here. Wasteland punishes decks that are trying to play play lands is basically what it comes down to. We take three, we take two, we take one. So that's six. So any threat basically beats us here. Lingering Souls is really sweet out of the opponent's deck. I think one of the big problems with the archetype that the opponent playing the Death and Dexes deck is that it has pretty low average card quality in modern in relation to other decks. And playing Lingering Souls in their deck does is works towards fixing that, right? Like it's a very high card quality card. I agree, Argon. I think without Force of Will, you'd have to you'd have to manage the format with a ban list. That's fine. Like I said, there's a bunch of people that like Brainstorm. There's a bunch of people that like Wasteland. There's a bunch of people that like Force of Will. Legacy's the format for them. 
I'm not one of those people, so it's not for me, and that's okay. Not not every format of magic has to be enjoyed by every person, right? Like, I don't like EDH, I don't like limited. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with those formats. It just means they're not for me, and that's okay. Not not every part of magic has to appeal to every single person playing it. We're waiting for the second match in this league to pop while we try and scrape together a couple of wins with our displacers and our ravenous rats. I'd just like to thank everyone for hanging out here today. Welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time stream meme magic uh, content creator here on Twitch. I'm streaming magic 30 plus hours a week here on this channel. I play primarily modern. Uh, if you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full-time. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without all the wonderful support from them. If you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, if you link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, that gets you Twitch Prime included with that for free. And Twitch Prime gives you a free channel subscription every single month to a channel of your choice here on Twitch. Um, even if you don't, even if you have Twitch Prime, even if you don't want to support my content with it, make sure you go and give it to somebody. Using that Twitch Prime every month is like taking some money out of Amazon's pocket and giving it to someone here working to make some content. Um, past that, you can support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. Cardsphere.com will love to help you turn some of your cards into other cards directly with other players. There's no haggling. They just take a 1% fee off the top. Inkedgaming.com will love to help you customize your gaming experience using code JEFF12. You can save 12% on custom play mats, mouse pads, binders, and bags there. Coolstuffinc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code JEFF5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. Stark 2 k thanks for the brand new Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Thanks for the support. And of course, this stream wouldn't be possible without viewers like Anironix, Justin, Nivik, and all y'all out there. If you are new and enjoying the content, make sure at the very least you hit that follow button. Following the stream doesn't cost you anything, and it lets you know when I go live and with what. If you can't catch all my stuff live, be sure to check out my YouTube channel as well. YouTube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland, 100% of my streams get archived there so you can catch up on them later. I mean, this is this is the perfect curves, right? We got the old the old ravenous rats into the Eldrazi displacer, just like we drew it up. Wasteland doesn't doesn't punish greedy mana bases. Wasteland by and large punishes people who just happen to get unlucky. I can't tell you the number of times I've played a 22, 23, 26 land legacy deck and like kept a two lander, gotten wastelanded and just like never drawn another land in four to five turns. Like that's, it just, wasteland is a card that takes the variance that magic has wrapped up into the, the resource system and just like amplifies it by a ton. I don't think I want a Rotting Rats here. I really don't have anything I want to discard. I'm just going to go ahead and play this and pass. This, this card's pretty bad. I feel like this card probably shouldn't be in our deck. I've, I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's not a card game I've played before. I've played a bunch of Pokemon. Um, yeah, Pokemon's really the only other major card game I've really played. We are we are 0 and 1. We lost to Black White Taxes last match. Probably not a good scene for us. Uh, I do not play Popper. Played it a couple of times in the past. It's just not a very popular format, so it doesn't really make for good content. Play Displacer. This kind of locks out all of our stuff, though. Yeah, I agree, Extras. The, the Swarm Yards kind of feels like we're being a little bit too much of a slave to our theme. That being said, that was uh, that's a decent draw. I'm just gonna go ahead and pass here because they go to kill our rats. I'll just blink them.
Uh, heck, Hex is slowly becoming no longer a thing. Their, their CEO had posted a thing about them not having money to pay for art assets. So it doesn't, it doesn't sound like they're doing too well. That's a tilt. At least get to get another card out of their hand here. Because Soul Scar Mage doesn't fix problems that the blue red tempo deck has. Oh, I should have regenerated, right? 10 out of 10 should have regenerated, because they wouldn't have been able to kill both of these. And a hundred dollars stapled to it, Matt Man. If you want if you want to get anything past the Hugo Felter, staple hundred dollars to it. Makes it makes it real easy to slip by. Wait, did they not kill my rotting grants? Oh, they did, they just don't want me to. Uh, they don't want me to unearth them, I guess. Don't you tell people how to spend their money, Matt Man. They're good, decent people. They f they fund this great nation. Studying for Series 24 and Jeff makes it tolerable. Straight for here. Thanks for the, the six month three subscription, the half a year. I appreciate it. Yeah, this deck's this deck's really medium. This deck's got a lot of a lot of mediocre cards in it. We, we added a few better ones, but it's definitely got a lot of stinkers left around. I'm gonna give it a shake in a couple more matches, but. I don't think you have a problem with four plus toughness threat circle, circle Turk. I feel like a lot of the matches where you care about four plus toughness threats, you can just go over the top of them or a Grim Lava Man. Grim Lava Mancer similarly helps you beat four plus toughness threats while also being reach. I think, I think Soul Scar Mage is just worse than. Basically, Gert84, thanks for the brand new tier on sub. I appreciate that. Welcome. Basically, Soul Scar Mage isn't better than any of the creatures we're already playing, in my opinion. And we can't afford to cut spells for non-spells. This is the last leak of the day. I'll be back at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. What am I hoping to see in Return to Ravnica? A playable standard format. Was that too soon? Was that too, was that, was that too brutal? Do you think this is why I don't get preview cards? <laughs> Ah, uh, magic's great. <clears throat> what is on the menu tomorrow? Uh, I won't know for certain until I sign off and add all of the bonus points for people that have donated and shared for today. A third of the year, what happened? Thalon 3000, thanks for the four months and welcome back. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me employed here. You get the preview card of my heart. Look at that! Ravenous Rats traded for a Bloodbraid Elf. It's like a three for one. You have another one? Yeah, makes sense. 
Into Boreal Druid. What a fierce and powerful magic card my opponent has cast. All right, we're going to ditch Aether Vial here. Last one got a Blood Braid, so I assume they've got mostly winners left in their hand. Obligator. Wow, what is their last one? Do they just have, like, another Obligator? Yeah, I agree. Boreal Druid is a great addition to the opponent's deck. Yep. We're so close to rat locking them, chat. We're so close to rat locking them. And we're dead. All right. If only, if only we weren't just dead. All right, I'm going to bring in these extra pack rides so we can try and turn our bad magic cards into playable ones. Have we won a game yet? Yeah, maybe? No. No is the answer to your question. I couldn't remember. The first one was kind of a slog, and they were they were blurring. Uh, uh, is Slaughter the Strong good? Maybe? We were close to not losing a game. We were close to not losing. I don't know about winning, but we were definitely close to not losing. What's the meme factor of this deck? I actually feel like this deck's kind of just a pooper. Like, the meme factor feels low, and it's also not very good. Just, like, what it's doing isn't very exciting, right? Like, the idea of displacer locking, like, isn't really that amazing. Zero percent that we're getting to five matches with this. I want to leave the path in my hand here. How do we? How do we beat a three-two, Chad? I don't understand. I'm scared, Chad. They got a three-two. On crop crasher, huh? Okay, I can see it. I can see that. It's kind of neat. I don't know that it's good, but it's definitely neat. Uh, sometimes I start to drag in like the 12 hour stream monsters, but the six to eight hour stints aren't that bad. Usually enjoy myself for most of it. Usually when I stop enjoying a deck, we stop playing it. That's like, that's like my rule. The content's not good if I'm not having fun. So if I'm not having fun, I just don't play. I think anyone being annoyed is just bad TV, honestly. The worst is when, like, 
someone is streaming and like they they're just like super salty about whatever their opponent's deck is doing like they're they're dead on board to storm but they just don't want to concede they're just like making their opponent like click through it well i mean we took all their toys away chat redbeard thank you very much for the twitch prime support welcome all right, let's get frisky with our rats, chat. Now, how do we beat a 3-2? Details, details. We're just going to race him with the Rattata beatdown. He thought we couldn't beat a 3-2, chat. Rattata-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta